Hey guys, it's Samara from CoachingConsciousCreators.com and today I'm here to share more with you that you can implement to create the life that you truly desire. So a lot of us in the manifestation community, the conscious creation community, um, are repeatedly told how our reality is a reflection of our inner world, how we create our own reality. And today, I not only want to break that down a little further, but I want to talk to you guys about how to use that mirror to improve your life in different ways that you can do that. So I want to start by saying what that really means in Samara speak is that whatever we're experiencing in our reality is trying to inform us about what's happening on the inside of us. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to respond. It just means that we are getting information. So it's similar to a mirror in the physical world. When you walk up to a mirror, you see yourself, you may be happy with what you see, you may want to change something or you may not like something. And when you notice that, you can choose to adjust your appearance or you can choose to just carry on depending on your resources, how much time you have and all that kind of stuff. So our reality is the same way. It's just always giving us information and it's totally up to us whether we choose to do anything with that information. So what I'm going to do in this video is break down... Um, everything we see in our reality into four categories and tell you potential ways that you could respond to each one. Now remember, we cannot get this wrong, this experience. We are here to explore possibilities. We are here as a, I don't even want to say subset, but as a reflection of God and God wants to experience all things. And so we come here with a certain set of ingredients and energies with the potential for us to experience all kinds of things. But we have free will. Free will rules everything. So even if you're saying things in your reality and you're choosing not to respond or you respond in a way that you, I don't know, are judging as bad, you can't get this wrong. So never beat yourself up for what you're seeing in your reality or what you're experiencing. Okay, so the four categories. First, I'll start with the tough one, and it's the triggers. So if you are going about your day and you run into something that triggers an extreme emotional reaction, your emotional reaction represents something that you're not yet solid on within you. So an example of that would be somebody calling you a name or making a comment about your appearance or judging your behavior. You know, as a mom, I'm in mom groups and there's a lot of judgy behavior. Like there's a whole lot of, hey, what should I do about this? Or what do you think about this? And then people just dive in to give their judgments. And if somebody's judgment triggers you, it means that you're not sure about your own belief in that area. Because if you were, the trigger wouldn't happen. That energy wouldn't move in you to defend yourself or to have that emotional reaction. So, you know, let's say you're walking down the street and somebody says, hey, your ears look like elephant ears. Are you going to have an emotional reaction to that? No, because you are sure that your ears are just fine. But if somebody get, hits close to home, for example, the mom groups, if someone says, oh, it's wrong for you to work outside the home and you get triggered by that and you feel the need to defend your position, it's because on some level, you're not sure you're making the right decision yourself. So anytime that you're triggered, you can choose to just be triggered. You can choose to defend yourself, but there's an opportunity there to examine what's going on in your inner world and remove some self-judgment. So instead of defending yourself, especially in social media or even in person, what you could do is say, hmm, why did I feel triggered by that? You can tell the person who triggered you, you know, thank you for sharing your opinion and leave it at that because it really doesn't matter whether or not they agree with what you're doing. What matters is whether you agree with what you're doing. And then you can take those emotions and ask yourself, am I 100% secure in my choice to do X, Y, Z? Am I 100% secure in my looks or my intelligence? And so if you have an emotional reaction, it's more about you than the other person. And your reality 
may be trying to bring to your attention that you have some unresolved issues in the area or you have some self-judgment happening or a lack of self-compassion around something or a lack of confidence and your reality is prompting you or giving you the opportunity to address that and you can choose to do that or not i have the categories written if you see me looking down um, the second category is patterns. So again, in the manifestation community, a lot of us, most people who are into man manifestation have an area where they can just easily pop things into their reality. For me, it's money. Like if I want money, boom, money shows up. But when it comes to relationships, I have some blocks and some beliefs that I'm still working through. And so if you notice patterns in your life or you notice an area where things never seem to go right for you. And not only do they not go right for you, but they go wrong in the same exact way every time. Your reality might be trying to prompt you to look at some of your underlying beliefs, things that are ingrained in your subconscious that could be removed. You have an opportunity to remove or shift those things. Again, you can choose to look at those patterns and go within and address the things that those your reality is prompting you to address or you can choose to continue i mean it, again free will at the end of the day the third category is things that you admire but do not possess so what does that mean that for example is when you watch someone give an inspirational speech and you're like oh wow you know that's amazing i wish i could do that if it triggers that type of reaction in you, it means that that skill is something that you possess and can access if you choose. So people who don't have that skill, people who don't have, because whatever we can imagine, we have the potential to experience or possess, right? So if you are thinking in your mind, wow, I'd really love to have that, or I'd really love to be able to do that, it means you do have the potential. God gave you the seed of imagining something for yourself. And those situations present opportunities for you to possess what it is that you admire. So if you, I don't know, admire someone who's wealthy or you admire someone who's intelligent or you admire someone who's beautiful, it means that you too can have that thing and your reality is trying to guide you toward it, either by emulating whomever you admire or whatever you admire or by just choosing your own path to experiencing that in your own reality. The fourth category, oh, back to the third category. One way that this can flip is if you see something that you admire or desire outside of you that you don't possess, some people turn to envy. And envy means that people are not yet aware of their power because they see something that they want and they don't realize the universe is trying to tell them that they have access to it. They think that they are powerless or they have some sort of underlying belief. So if you experience envy, when you see something outside of yourself that you admire, it means that you don't understand your own power. So a lot of people, especially people who are making major changes in their life, I don't care if the changes are considered positive or whatever, will experience a lot of envy and be confused by it. Envy is always someone looking at what you have, wanting it, but not believing that they have the power to obtain it for themselves. And once they're, they are reminded of their power, that envy just disappears. And once we, if we are struggling with envy, recognize what the universe is trying to tell us, which is that we have access to the thing, then envy disappears as well. And we look at those, we look for opportunities to admire because when someone presents something to us that could take us to the next level, that we're looking at like, wow, I didn't think of that. That's amazing. Or that's beautiful. Or that's wonderful. We are grateful because they've opened up our perception of what is possible. And we go after it if it is something that we want. So that's the third category. The fourth category is things that you admire and possess. So this is the evidence of your inner God-likeness, probably a better way to say that. Um, but whatever you look around and see and you're like, I'm so pleased with that, that should serve as a reminder or the universe is trying to tell you, hey, you brought this into your experience. 
And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we get so used to things or sometimes we're so focused on the envy or the lack or we're caught up in those emotions from being triggered and we don't recognize everything wonderful that we've brought into our reality. So when you're looking around and you have a moment where you're like, wow, this is really nice or wow, I'm really enjoying this experience or wow, I'm so lucky to have this person or these people in my life that is your reality telling you or reminding you of your power. So we can intentionally use these experiences if we're aware that we truly create every single detail of our reality instead of feeling powerless, instead of feeling overwhelmed, instead of feeling like God or the universe is punishing us or rewarding us or anything like that, if we understand that the universe is always assisting and always just a mirror to what it is that we're creating, then we can take advantage of those opportunities and we can eliminate unnecessary suffering in our lives. And so let me review those four categories for you again. The first category is triggers or things that uh, trigger negative emotion in you. And those opportunities can be used to look at how solid you are in your beliefs around the thing or, you know, whatever. Um, the second category is pattern. So if something keeps happening over and over and over and over again in a way that is not pleasing to you, then that's an opportunity to examine like more complex or deeply ingrained beliefs that you might have about something. The third category is things that you admire but do not possess, meaning they're outside of your experience. You're just looking at somebody else possess them. Those are those are opportunities for you to go and grab those things and bring them into your reality. It means you got a green light and you have access to that. So if you see something that you like that somebody else is doing and you feel that, wow, that's wonderful, don't let it shift into envy allow it to be your green light telling you that you have access to the exact same thing. And the fourth category is things that you possess and you're pleased with. That is your opportunity to be reminded of how powerful you are, about how you are the universe, about how all of this is an experience that you created and that you have a lot of influence over. And finally, as a bonus, I said this before, but I wanna say it again, we cannot get this wrong. No matter how we choose to respond to what's in our reality, we still own this experience and there is no pass and fail. There's only exploration. And so don't be hard on yourself, especially if you're new to this information. And I know it can be triggering for someone to say, well, whatever you're experiencing in your reality, in your reality you created when you're surrounded by things that you don't even want. And you're like, there's no way that I would create this for myself. Knowing that you did create it is not a condemnation. It is an introduction to your true power as a conscious creator. So take it as such and really go within. I can speak on this because I've been working on this stuff for heavy for the past six years or so. But even before then... I've always been a very spiritual person, always been addicted to like learning more about myself. And I have seen my life transform just from that one simple, simple thing, just from taking responsibility for my experience and then taking it a step further and not condemning myself and saying, okay, how can I hack this? If I'm truly creating all of this, what do I need to do differently? What do, what do I need to examine in order to shift this reality. And I have shifted my reality in so many ways and I've got so much further to go and it's an exciting journey. Am I saying that because I understand this, I'm never triggered, that I never experience envy, that I never have bad days or weeks? No, but what I am saying is that knowing this information, building on it over time, has transformed my life so much so far and i know that by continuously coming back to this information and this concept that i'll be able to continue to create the life of my dreams and while i'm doing that i come on here and i share all of that with you guys so i hope this is helpful 
I'm going to do a follow-up Patreon video. My Patreon, I think it's at $5 a month now. But after each of these YouTube videos, I go on there and I give you guys tools, um, very detailed, more detailed explanations and personal experience so that you can really take this and run with it. So if you're interested in that, check the link below for joining the community and check me out over there. Thank you.